Hey guys, I'm back to do another video and this video is going to be a little bit different, but um, today I just wanted to share my testimony about my life story and also just about, today I also wanted to talk about sharing God's word, sharing our testimony with other people, and also I want to talk about salvation and repentance. But before I get into that, I want to open up with a word of prayer, just ask God to be with me as I share my testimony and as I share his word with you guys. Father God, I come before you, Lord God, and I just thank you, God, for this day, and God, I just pray that you would use my testimony right now to touch people's hearts, Father God, and I pray, Father God, that people will listen to this message today and that they would be inspired, God, that they would be inspired to give their lives to you, Father God, and for the believers who listen to this today, God, I pray that they would they would be inspired to share your word with others, Father God, that they would be inspired to share their testimony. And I just pray, God, that you would give me your words to speak today, God, and use my life as your vessel in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the first thing... The first thing I want to do is I want to start out by sharing my testimony, but before I get into that, I want to let you guys know that this is not easy for me to do. You know, it, it's not easy for me to step out like this and to share my life story like this, you know, and it's not easy because it's not stuff I'm used to doing. Some of the things I'm going to share today, I I don't like to share these things, you know. And But I pray that my testimony would touch someone's heart today. And before I get into my testimony, I want to share a verse with you guys. And the verse I want to share with you guys is Romans 12, 9, and it says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weakness, in insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And that's 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. Okay, so I'm going to get into this part of my testimony, and all my life I've had, since I was a baby, I've had health issues, problems with my health, and, you know, and problems with, specifically with my ears, and I, when I was younger, I, I would get really bad ear infections and I had to have a couple of different surgeries on my ears and I had to have tubes put in my ears and I ended up losing all of my hearing in my left ear and little by little as as the years went on I started losing hearing in my right and I've always prayed and asked God to restore my hearing, you know, 
to bring back that hearing and I I always felt like because because of my hearing like I'm not I'm not normal you know I'm not normal like other people because of that weakness that I have and so th this is not that's the part of my testimony that's not easy for me to talk about you know because like I said, it, it's a weakness, and it's not something I really like to talk about, but Paul says here to boast in our weakness, boast in our weakness, and usually when we think about boasting, we think, oh, I'm better than them, or I'm all that in a bag of chips, or whatever, you know, but Paul doesn't say to boast proudly. He says to boast in our weakness. Why should we boast in our weakness? Because that is when Christ makes us strong. And like I said, I used to pray for God to heal me. And I, I asked different people to pray for God to heal me. And went to the doctors a couple of times. And I had a couple of hearing tests done. And like every time I go to the doctor is the same thing in the left ear there's nothing there no hearing there and then in the right ear it seems to get worse every time I go and so anyways um I I grew up without my dad. He left when I was two, and I didn't really, I didn't really know him while I was growing up. And um, anyways, growing up, I didn't really, I didn't really think I had a testimony. I didn't really think I had a testimony because a lot of people I hear their testimony and. It's about drugs and alcohol and sex outside of marriage and relationships and that kind of stuff. But me, I saw that stuff growing up. I saw that stuff for the first nine, ten years of my life. And I told myself that I would never do that. I would never do that. You know, because I saw, I saw that lifestyle and I saw the effect that it had on families. And I thank God because he helped me to stay true to that promise to myself. It's only by the grace of God that I was able to stay true to that promise to myself and to God. And, um, I thank God because January 2nd, 1992 was the day my mom decided that she wasn't going to do drugs or alcohol anymore. And I thank God for that, you know, because it's been 28 years clean and sober. And I, I did grow up with a lot of feelings of anger and hurt and rejection and abandonment and that stuff that I held inside for many years and I, I bottled it up inside, you know, and so anyways, when I was 11, my family started going to the church I go to now. And back then it was called Latin American Church of the Nazarene. And now it's called Community Church of the Nazarene. And we didn't go consistently. Like, we went off and on. And when we did go, we didn't really want to go. My mom had to make us go. 
And so anyways, at around the time I was 14, my family stopped going, going to church. And the reason that I kept going was because I felt in my heart that I felt love there. I felt love at that church, and even though I wasn't yet a believer in Christ, I still kept going because of that reason, because of the love that I felt at that church. And so when... When I was 15, When I was 15, I went to a youth camp with the youth group, and I, it was there that I gave my life to Christ. The pastor asked if anyone here wanted to receive Christ for them to lift their hand, and I lifted my hand, and then he invited us to go up to the front to the altar to receive Christ, and it was at that youth camp that I gave my life to Christ, and I can say that when I gave my life to Christ, I thought that everything was going to change like that, like that. I thought that everything was going to change. My family was going to do better. They were going to go back to church and stuff like that, you know? And so it didn't happen that way, and I continued to pray for my family. And I'm still praying for the rest of my family to give their lives back to Christ, to go back to church. But anyways, when I was 15, I went to a missions trip in Mexicali, and I... The, I went with the church that I go to now, and the youth, we stayed at a campsite, and we stayed in tents, and every morning and every night we heard a message, and the, I believe it was the first night we were there, we heard a message from one of the pastors about his first missions trip that he went on and how God had called him to the mission field. God had called him to travel and to share Christ with people. And he he gave an altar call for anyone who wanted who felt like God was calling them to the mission field and he said if there is anyone here who feels like God is calling them to the mission field, if anyone here feels like God is calling them to travel and to share God's word with people, if that's you, I want to ask you to stand up. And so I knew right then at 15 years old that God was calling me to share his word with people. God was calling me to preach the gospel to people and... So from the time I was 15 until now, I never lost that passion for sharing Christ. That day, God put something in, God burst something in my heart to share his word with people. To preach his love to people who don't know the love of Christ, to those who need hope. And since that day, that's been like my number one passion for sharing Christ with people. And while I didn't lose the passion for sharing Christ, as I got older, I started to lose sight of that calling that God had on my life. I started to lose sight of that calling that God had on my life to go into the mission field. I started to feel like I was not good enough. You know, started to feel like I was inadequate. And so, after a few years, I, 
I ended up leaving my home church and going to another church with a friend of mine. And I ended up leaving that church and going to another church. And then, um, it was in that time that my mom started going back to church and taking my nephews to church who she had custody of at that time. And after that, my my mom gave her life back to Christ, I believe, in 2013 or 2014. And so... She had asked me to go to her baptism in April 2014. And I want to say that the day I saw my mom get baptized was the happiest day of my life. It was the happiest day of my life, you know, because I had prayed for my mom for over 20 years. For my mom to give her life back to Christ. And I thank God because in 2015 I ended up going back to my home church. And I thank God now because I'm serving there faithfully. And I thank God because he blessed me with a job. I was praying for a job for so long, and God blessed me with a job. And now I I tithe faithfully. I told God if he blessed me with a job that I would become faithful in giving. I would tithe faithfully. And now God blessed me with a job, and I've been tithing every paycheck I get. I tied to him, and when I prayed for a job, I specifically prayed and asked God for a job where I would not have to work on Sundays. And God blessed me with that job. And I want to say, after about a year, maybe going back to the church I go to now, Community Church of the Nazarene, I was talking to one of the sisters and I was telling her, you know what, when, what do you do when you feel like you lost sight of God's calling on your life? What do you do when you feel like you lost sight of God's calling on your life? She told me to pray about it, pray about it and ask God to restore that calling on my life. And so I started to pray about it. And I didn't really feel anything at first, you know, but I I was invited to go to a convention with the youth leaders, with the leaders of my church. And that first night of the convention, they were talking about missions and the different missionaries from different countries. They were sharing about the work that God was doing in their countries. And it was so powerful. And it was like God needed me to see that, to begin to restore that passion, that desire, that calling that he had on my life, you know? And I thank God because after that, con after that convention, I came home and I enrolled in classes at the Nazarene Bible College online through my church. And since that, since then, I've been taking classes for the past couple years. And my, my major is pastoral studies. And next year in June 2021, I'm going to be getting my BA in pastoral studies and I thank God because it hasn't been easy but it's been so worth it it's been worth it and it like I said it wasn't easy it wasn't easy but it's worth it and I thank God because now not only am I the, 
the only one praying for the rest of my family to come back to God. But also my mom is praying for my family too, for my siblings and my nephews and my niece and that they would come to God. <sighs> And right now I'm gonna, that concludes my, the, the testimony part, but I want to share another verse with you guys on why it is important for us to share our testimony. Why is it important for us to share our testimony? And I'm going to read Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Romans 8, 28, and it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Everything that I went through in life is not for nothing. Even the bad things, God says that he worked it for the good. Everything that you went through in life, everything that you're going through in life, it's not for nothing. God is working that for the good. He is working that for the good so that, so that you can testify to other people. So that through your testimony, people can see that there is hope. And right now, I want to share... Um, Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to Bear with me one second. And it says, Matthew 9, 35 to 38. Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed like, and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Matthew 9, 35-38 Believers those of us who call ourselves Christians, children of God, the harvest field is ready. The harvest field is souls. The souls are ready. God is waiting for us to go out and to reach the harvest. He didn't just call the pastors. He called all of us to reach people for his kingdom. The harvest is ready, but the workers are few. God needs more workers. He needs his people to rise up. To rise up and to go out into the harvest field and share his word. And right now, I want to share. God is showing me that there's going to be someone who's going to watch this that has never given their life to Christ before. You're watching this and you've never given your life to Christ before. God is knocking on the door of your heart. God is knocking on the door of your heart. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, 
I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20 If you've never opened up your heart to Christ, he's knocking on the door of your heart. He's waiting for you to open your heart to him. The door of your heart only has one handle, and that's on the inside. God's not going to break down the door. He is patiently waiting for you to open the door of your heart. I believe that tonight God is speaking to backsliders as well. Backsliders. Those who at one time you knew God. You knew what it was to walk with God. God is calling you back to him tonight. Luke chapter 15 verses 3 to 7 says, Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not... Leave the ninety-nine to, in the open country to go after that lost sheep until he finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you the truth that... I tell you the truth that in the same way there, is, there will be much rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Backslider, God is calling you home tonight. God is calling you home. He's saying, my son... My daughter, come back. Come back. I love you. I love you. I still have a plan for your life. I still have a calling on your life. Come back to me. Did you guys know that even for believers, when we take our eyes off of God and when we start wanting to do our own thing, that for us as believers, even though we're not, even though we're not back in the world doing the, own, doing the old things we did, did you know that is, that we're still considered in that backslidden state? If once we take our eyes off of God and think, I got this, you know, I don't need God. That technically we're in that backslide, backslidden state when we think that we don't need God. And I shared with you guys not too long ago, but a couple weeks ago I was in that state. I was on the verge of turning away from God, you know? I was on that verge of turning away from God because things in life were not going the way that I thought they should. And I thank God because He, I thank God because He gave me sisters in Christ that love me. That spoke words of life into me. That prayed for me. That spoke the truth in love. And it took me falling on my knees and repenting to God. Asking God for forgiveness. That's what God wants from us. Each and every day God wants us to ask for his forgiveness. He wants us to have that repentant heart to come to Him humbly. Because once we start thinking 
we don't need God, that we got this life on our own, that's when God humbles us. And we need God every single day. I know I need God every single day, every single hour, every single minute, every single second, you know? And with that, I'm just going to go ahead and close out this message with the word of prayer. And right now, I want to pray for us as believers. I want to pray for us as believers that we would never stop sharing our testimony. That we would never stop sharing the good news of Christ with those that need that hope that is only in Jesus. So right now I'm just going to pray for us as believers for what you've done in my life, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that we others would never stop sharing our testimony. That we would stop thanking you, God, for everything that you've done in our lives, Father God. Father God. For that we would never stop being that hope to those, Father God. That we would never stop Pray, Father God, that we would go out into the harvest field, Lord God, and... And I pray, Father God, that we are those who nobody else wanted to reach us, that we would lead, that we would lead people to a reflection of Christ where people would want that salvation. Father God, not only that we would not leave that to the pastors because you all of us to be your laborers. And I pray, Father God, that we would answer the call to be your laborers, Father God. That we would answer the call to shine your light, Father. And I pray, God, that you would social media and the different resources and platforms that you have given us, Father God. And God, I just pray that you would continue to use us in Jesus' name. Amen. And right now, I just want to pray for anyone who's going to hear this message today, who's going to hear my testimony. Who's going to hear my testimony and... You're not a believer in Christ. You're not a believer in Christ. Or maybe you're backslid at one time. You did know God. You're at that point in your life where you're not walking with God anymore. I want you to say this prayer with me. If you want that hope that only Jesus can give, I invite you to say this prayer with me. Father God, I, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. And I believe that he rose again three days later. And he sits at the right hand of God in heaven. And he's preparing a place for me. I thank you, Jesus, for your love, for your grace for your mercy, and for your forgiveness. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Jesus, I give you my life today. My life is not my own. I give it to you. Help me to live this life the way that you have called me to live. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer today, I want to tell you, welcome to the family of God. And I encourage you to tell someone. Tell someone about the decision that you made to follow Christ. Tell someone about the decision you made to follow Christ. I encourage you, I find a church home. Find a church home. I encourage you to find a church home and also to read your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to reach out to someone who can help you get a Bible. And I encourage you to pray every day. If you're listening to this message and if you gave your life to Christ and you want someone to encourage you, 
If you're listening to this message and you gave your life to Christ and you want someone to encourage you, to pray for you, feel free to let me know. Let me know in the in my inbox or call me or text me if you don't have a phone number. If you don't have my phone number and you want someone to pray for you every day, I encourage you to get a hold of me and I promise you I will pray for you every single day if I will do every single day and just know that you are a new creation in Christ. You are a new creation in Christ. And God doesn't want to stop here. God wants to keep working in your life. Share. If God leads you to, I'm going to ask you to share this message because I believe that God wants people to hear this message that need that hope that is only in Him. Alright, God bless you guys. I love you guys and I'm praying for you guys.